a lot of people don't understand what us truckers have to sacrifice to bring you your products and what we have to go through to to get the job done today is one of the most important holidays of the year in the uk pancake day now i understand that i have got an international audience and not everyone will be aware of what pancake day is um, so to explain it uh, at some point in time someone has eaten a pancake and realized how delicious they are and they are amazing and just point out and i'm really sorry to all my american viewers when i say a pancake i'm talking about what you would refer to as a crepe not the big thick pancakes they're not really pancakes the nice thin ones and they are amazing um basically we have a day that celebrates how delicious they are the only thing is i'm on my truck pancake day and I can't have any pancakes I know I can have them at the weekend it's just not the same though I am Big Daddy, this is Except for Access, that is a big ass rain cloud, well, let's just get into it. Weather aside, the week's been pretty good so far, in fact, no, I'm actually going to say that I'm actually quite enjoying the rain now. Um, with the amount of salt that's been on the roads, it's nice to uh, get a, a rain bath as such and get the, uh, the windscreen looking nice and perfect and clear. I do need to take the, take the truck to a truck wash this week, and I will do, um, but for now, the rain will do. My planner Paul has said that he wants to get me north, up in Scotland, to go and get some jobs done up there. And I'm really looking forward to that because <laughs> it's, although it's a bit annoying with the speed limits in Scotland, at the same time, I do like, yeah, I, I, I like Scotland. It's a great place to drive. And you get a lot of time to take in the scenery. But we're not going to talk about speed limits in Scotland. So that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> it's getting darker by the second. This is mid-afternoon, by the way. I know you probably can't tell it. but you won't be able to tell it with that camera in front because it makes everything look like midday. But it has gone very dark. <laughs> Unfortunately at the moment, hopes of Scotland are looking very much dashed so far. Um, maybe by Wednesday I'll be up that way. Oh, maybe not Wednesday, maybe Thursday. I don't know. I don't think Scotland's looking very good. Um, I'm currently on my way to Bristol and I'm going to collect a load for Brighton. <laughs> Which, let's be honest, Brighton isn't the closest geographically to Scotland. Still, what can you do? Brighton's good. I like Brighton. I've not been there for a while. Regardless, we've got some travelling to do. Let's get it done. Hopefully we'll be in Brighton by tonight. Fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's foot down. I did not sleep well last night at all. You can see how much the uh, the truck's moving around. God damn. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so I parked up last night um, 
about an hour away from the destination. I couldn't quite manage to get there, unfortunately, which is a bit of a, a bit crap, but not much can be done about it. And I've never slept this close to the main road in a curtain cider before. I've slept it in a tipper and containers and everything else, but not a curtain cider. Um, it wasn't an enjoyable experience. Uh, <laughs> the, the curtain ciders, it amplifies every truck going past. And yeah, it is miserable. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't a fun night at all. Right, I've just left site. Um, I'm not gonna mention where I've just been for security reasons, near Brighton. Um, and I've come from near Bristol. That That's good enough, I think. Uh, we're now heading out towards Portsmouth-ish um, to go and I think pick up some kind of medical supplies. Um, all I know is it is very light. Uh, I don't, I don't actually think from what I've seen on the ticket, I don't even think it weighs a ton. Uh, <laughs> which is um, amazing. <laughs> in fact, looking at the dimensions of it, um, again, on the paperwork, I'm pretty sure this would fit in a van, but uh, there's probably a reason they want it to be delivered by an Arctic. Um, <laughs> I'm just a driver. I don't... Yeah. Oh, well, who knows? It's uh, it's one of them. Oh, and I just thought I'd mention as well, because I, I did record this morning while I was very tired, and I'm sure I'm going to get comments from people saying, why don't you just unhook the trailer um, while I was besides the road? It was something that I thought of after the fact. Um, I did think to wind down the legs and to drop the suspension, but... By the time I thought, oh uh, yeah, I need to detach the trailer, realistically, it was pushing on too late. It would have meant, um, it would have meant, it would be another nine hours from when I moved the trailer that I could actually, uh, that could work. So basically, I just decided just to kind of grin and bear it as such. Um, it was crap, but it's unfortunately, part of the job isn't it I guess it's to make up for Monday night when uh, when I got a really nice early uh, sleep I was bunked down by like half four or something <laughs> and that was because I was at a that's because I was at a recycling site and as I have mentioned when I if, if you guys have been following the channel since I've worked for Dents or if you've gone back through my catalogue like some people have and watched all of them um, recycling jobs are notorious for firstly shutting at earlier times secondly having very strict cut off times and third for having enormous queues um, some of the longest queues I've ever been in have been recycling jobs. But it means you get to have a bit of a sit, have a bit of a chill, which is good. And in addition to picking up this load, there are a few other missions for today. Um, I've had a headlight go on me this morning and that needs to get replaced, which I can't do yet because you need a very long torque screwdriver to replace it. Um, so I'm going to have to find somewhere and buy one. Uh, my intention is to try and find maybe a screw fix or something like that. Or a Travis Perkins. I'm not discounting them, although I don't think Travis Perkins would have anything like that. I'm pretty sure we didn't when I worked there. Also, the truck still needs washing. It is still filthy. Um, yeah. Uh, although the it has been washed a bit by the rain, which is quite nice. There's not as much salt built up on all of the windows. And I've tried to give this uh, this window here a bit of a wipe down. Not very successfully, admittedly, but I have tried. 
And it's the trying that really matters, I think. In addition to that, I also need fuel as well. And I've been down this road and the options for Morgan fuels aren't great. And I am starting to run reasonably low. I'm not quite on the red or anything yet, but it's, uh, I've definitely got range anxiety going on. Uh, I had seen one spot that didn't look the most arctic friendly. So we shall see. Bloody Morgan fuels. And the last thing, which should really have been the first thing, but it's the first thing I'm going to do, is breakfast. Yep, I need breakfast. We've just arrived in Swindon and I wasn't going to record, but I spoke to Ashley, Ashley Hill UK. I'll put a link to his channel down below. And um, he reminded me there is a landmark in Swindon. One that the nerd in me really <laughs> is quite excited to see. Um, <laughs> God, I'm such a dog. And what is this, this landmark that I'm so excited to see? Um, well, it's a roundabout. And not just any roundabout. This is the magic roundabout. <laughs> oh my God. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to go? Oh my God. Where the f am I supposed to be going here? Apparently it's all supposed to make sense. It does not. It might for car drivers, but for truck drivers, yeah, that was, uh, that was worrying there for a second. Also quite anticlimactic. I, <laughs> I thought it was going to be bigger. See a low bridge ahead. What height's this? Let's see a height limit on it. Yeah, it must be. Oh, for cycle track, that's why. <laughs> that's not where I'm driving. I thought I was going through that tunnel just there. <laughs> Thinking, Christ, that does seem a bit low. <laughs> I think the bloody things will be only about eight foot tall. Um, I want to be in this lane. Wow, they love their roundabouts in Swindon, don't they? I am truly disappointed about the magic roundabout. I, I thought I, I'm sure it was one of Tom Scott's videos, and it looked, it looked huge. Oh well, at least it's somewhat checked off the bucket list. <laughs> hasn't started off well. Um, I got up at half five and the place doesn't open up till eight o'clock. Now the company was told, my company, and I was told it'd be open for six o'clock. It wasn't. So that's now lost me two hours out of my day, which is it's frustrating, especially considering I've got to get up to Grimsby go back down to Leicester, then get up to Glasgow, and I'm supposed to be doing all of this by tonight, with two hours less. I don't think it's happening tonight, is it? 
I think the problem is, um, I can't remember what they call it, but from what I've gathered, there's companies out there that will buy a contract, like say for instance off these guys here, but they'll buy it knowing that they're not gonna actually deliver it. And then they might sell that onto another company who buys it uh, and has a bit of a cut of the profit. And again, they buy that contract knowing full well they're gonna sell it on and they're not gonna deliver it either. And this can happen several times until eventually a company like us decides, you know this, this package that you're playing like pass the parcel with and just taking a bit of money out each time, maybe we should go ahead and deliver it for the customer. I think probably I'm just in a bad mood today. Uh, I think that's just, I think that's just my general feelings. <laughs> oh dear. It's frustrating because <laughs> we've done everything right. We've, we've got the information that, you know, we thought we needed. I've turned up on time. I've turned up at the site. I've been ready and waiting. I've done all my checks nice and early. So we've done everything 100%, but we're the ones that are going to lose out now as a company, which is a bit crap, really. Ola. It is very windy up here. I'm currently on the A66 and I'm going to kind of talk a bit louder because, uh, well, firstly, I've had to put it into uh, power mode, bring it out of eco mode. It's, uh, it is a bit of a climb. And the next thing is the wind has picked up uh, as we've started climbing. And this is actually, this is the tallest curtain cider. Yeah, it's the tallest curtain cider I've, I've driven before. I have, I've done curtain ciders, not many, but I have done curtain ciders, but none this tall. This one here comes in at um, just over 15 foot, 15 to it comes in at, which you know is not, it's obviously not double stacker height, but the difference is, like, as an example, um, I've done walking floors and then they're, they're about 15 about 15 foot tall but you've got a flat side and obviously you've got a lot of the mechanics down there now this is full but even still I can feel the trailer wanting to pull me to one side and that's because the curtains absorb a lot more of that that wind the energy and you do have to be a little bit more on the ball now here we're okay because we are in a little bit of a dip, you can't really see it, but there are some some hills just there. But I think once we get start getting past these buildings and we get up to the very top, I think it might get a bit hairy. Good god. Yeah, it's really trying to pull me. The uh, the driver's side, the offside curtains are just bulging outwards because even though on the near side on the passenger side it is completely shut the, there's still wind coming in and blowing it out and that that kind of goes to show how much force there is there with that wind now you can see the summit just ahead here and this is where it does get a little bit sketchy because you've got a couple of issues obviously you've got the high winds but with a full load like this at 44 tons it wants to pull you down the hill and I, I think this is maybe like a 20% grade or something like that 
Am I really insane now? It's, it's sharp anyways, it goes downhill quite, quite fast. I'll put it up on screen what it actually is. If I found it, otherwise won't. <laughs> Something I have found as well is you do have to watch out for the bends, just the gradual ones, because that's when you can go from almost fully facing the wind to fully facing the wind. So here you are. Jesus f***ing Christ. Come on, we're all good. Well, I've actually dropped my speed down, I don't know if you can tell that, but I've dropped it just, uh, I'm actually only doing 40, 42 mile an hour, 44. Come on, you're all good. I can feel it leaning. Hell yeah, I can feel it leaning. I'm going to go into a bit of a dip here. But when you go into these, these troughs, these valleys, and I can instantly, as I start going in, I can feel it backing off. And you can feel the wind reducing. But this is where it can catch you out. Because what can happen is you start getting complacent, you start getting confident that you've got your vehicle back. And then as in a second, it's, uh, your cover just disappears and suddenly you're back out in the open again. And when that happens, you go from very little wind to a lot of wind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna reduce my speed down even more. I'm gonna have engine brake going all the way down this hill and I'm probably gonna not really exceed I might, might do 45 if I'm feeling really exciting. I'm not going to be going as quick as him. Right, I think we're almost down. Yeah, we're looking good. Uh, just to point out, I, I do get a lot of people, or maybe not a lot, but I do get some people saying, Are you okay? We're okay. But yeah, we do get um, some people saying, um, I, I, I don't know, like for instance, I'm not checking mirrors enough, or I'm not doing this, or I'm not doing that. There are a lot of cuts in this. Um, as you might be able to tell coming along that hill there, the, there are sections cut out, obviously for pacing of the video and stuff like that. complacent like that where you start to think you're out and you're in the clear the next thing it starts kicking back out again come on you're all good <sighs> yeah complacent like that <laughs> uh, <sighs> made me feel all, all strange and tingly that did there for a second I, I forgot all that about that bit of opening <laughs> But yeah, there is a lot of editing in these videos, and there are big sections cut out, and I think I might leave a bit of that in where I will just stop talking mid-sentence to concentrate on what I'm doing, because although, yes, I am a vlogger, um, obviously, you know, there's entertainment here, I am a driver first and a vlogger second. That is the simple reality of it. So. Um, a lot of these scenes, um, as an example, this one here, this has actually been uh, over 20 minutes of recording, but in the video, I, I don't know, it might be four minutes, three minutes, something like that. Because you, you don't really want to hear 20 plus minutes of me going, starting a sentence and just stopping midway through. And I do that all the time, because You okay? We're okay. Yeah, I do that all the time because in the day, like I say, driver first, vlogger second. Uh, 
I nearly made it to site last night. Um, I was about 15 minutes away and I had 30 minutes left on my time. And my intention was to find somewhere to park up on the industrial estate. But at the last second, I chickened out and I went into a services. Uh, my issue was I didn't, I didn't want to get on site or get onto the industrial estate, find there's nowhere to park up and then be left in a situation where I'm going to have to exceed my time again because I couldn't find somewhere. So, um, yeah, it's essentially, I've, I've played it safe and I just parked up at uh, the services. Yeah, I'm a big chicken, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want any more infringements. <laughs> I'm sure Vosa will, uh, will give me a good pummeling anyways for what I've got. <laughs> And I got there about six-ish, I think it was. Oh no, it'd be about, be about half six. And there was already two in front of me. It took them a while to get them unloaded and then me unloaded. Uh, in fairness, they were battling the elements on site, so it wasn't, wasn't really their fault. Uh, but annoyingly, it means that I'm now only just leaving and it's 10 o'clock, so yeah, that's bad. The weather is definitely getting worse. Uh, another driver who um, followed me over the A66 last night, um, he reckons gusts were exceeding 45 mile an hour. And he seems to think that the 66 will probably be closed now. Yeah, that's what he's thinking anyway, since it's not a problem for me, uh, but it is a problem for him, so I hope he gets home fine. Um, it might be a long trip around otherwise. Hopefully it'll be all good for him now. Hopefully. As for me though, I'm heading back to the yard. And I'm going to be heading back to the yard and arriving at a half decent time. Two o'clock in the afternoon. I've not been back at a yard for two o'clock in... Ah, oh, ages. I'm excited. I feel like I've got an extra day off. It's additional time to wind my missus up. <laughs> and have pancakes oh my god I need pancakes in my life uh, yeah anyways I've got a four-ish hour trip and how many hours have I got oh no oh no <laughs> I've got um, three hours 52 minutes of driving uh, down to, to Barra and I've got three hours, 58 minutes left. Do I risk it without a 45? That is the question. I don't know. Come on then, let's get back to the yard. Let's get home and let's go and get this video edited because uh, uh, you guys are super demanding. The wind has not let up the entire way down. Um, it's not been as bad as I thought, um, although there are warnings for 866, which is the road I was on last night. Um, apparently, it's uh, apparently it's a bit grim up there. Like, yeah, I'm glad I'm not on that road. But as for me, as for this week, um, as for this week's video, it's done. Yeah, um, it was a very good week. Uh, surprisingly good, actually. Um, I even managed to get to Scotland, which. I did not think was going to happen at all. I'm going to post a link to one of Nessa's videos in the comments down below. Um, she's promoting a charity event, which seems like it's a lot of fun. I want you guys to go and check it. Go and, go and click just down below. Um, I'll put it at the top of the uh, at the top of the comments or the top of the uh, the doobly doo thing. I don't know what it's called. The description, I think. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you next time.